Welcome back to the last part of Projectile Motion, The Adventures of Rolina, and we're going to be doing advanced problems. Okay, let's look at this problem. We're going to be doing some harder problems with this lesson, but this will be our last lesson. An airplane pilot is moving with a velocity V and drops a package. In the absence of air resistance, where is the package relative to the airplane at the moment it hits the ground? Okay, so what's happening is there's an airplane here. It's flying. <laughs> wow, there's a bad airplane. Anyway, it's flying with the speed of V and then it drops a package. So when it drops this package, what's gonna happen is if there's no air resistance is this airplane is gonna be, this package is gonna move like this. If someone is just looking at it from an objective point of view. However, since this airplane is also gonna be moving, what it's gonna be looking like is the velocity in the X direction of this package and the velocity in the X direction of the airplane will be exactly the same. So what's gonna happen is when the airplane looks directly down or someone from the airplane looks directly down, it's gonna be directly below the airplane, okay? And you can even try this out. If you have a tennis ball and you're running and you drop it, it's gonna be looking like it's falling directly below you. This is the same thing that's happening with the airplane. When it drops it, it looks like it's just falling directly below. But from the outside perspective, it's gonna be looking like a half parabola, okay? So it's gonna be directly below the airplane. All right, this next question is pretty difficult. Example number 10, a cannon is fired on the ground level at a, 20, at a 60 degree angle to the horizontal to a target on the ground 100 meters away. With what velocity was the cannon fired? Okay, so it just seems like there's very little information with this. So we have a cannon, it shoots something at an angle of 60 degrees, and it hits 100 meters away. Okay, and that's all we know. So this is where, uh, this, is, this is a pretty difficult problem. So let's write out everything that we know in the X and the Y direction. So we know acceleration in the X equals zero. Acceleration in the Y equals negative 10 meters per second squared. We know displacement in the X is gonna be equal to 100 meters because that's how far the cannonball travels. We know, and that's what, that's all it seems like we know. Just the acceleration, displacement. Oh, another thing that we know is the displacement in the y direction. It starts at this point here and ends in the same y plane. So that means the displacement in the y is gonna be zero meters. And that's all we know. So we only have two pieces of information for both. So this is where it becomes a little bit more difficult. However, one thing that we should know, what we're looking for is this velocity. But one thing we should know is we should know that the velocity in the x direction is going to be equal to this velocity times cosine of 60. And the velocity in the y direction is going to be equal to this velocity times sine of 60. Okay. And knowing this, what we can do later on is even though we don't know what these values are at the moment, we can use substitution later on to find out what these values are. So first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find uh, everything in the X and then I'm gonna substitute later for everything in the Y. So I'm gonna know, what I'm gonna do is I know for both of these, what's gonna be the same is time is gonna be the same for both of them. So I can use this knowledge to substitute later on. So now that I know, I know displacement in the x is equal to vxt plus one half axt squared. I know displacement is 100. Vx is equal to the velocity times cosine of 60 times t. And I know ax is zero, so this whole thing is zero. So I can say t is equal to 100 divided by V cosine of 60. Okay? 
And maybe just to make this a little bit more simple, I'm going to find what the value of six, uh, cosine 60 is. And that's this is 0.5. So I'm going to just simplify this to be t is equal to 200 divided by b. Okay. Now that we know that, let's look at our y value. So I'm going to go look at our y value. Displacement in the y equals vy t plus one half a y t squared. Displacement in the y is zero. V y is v sine sixty times t plus one half uh, negative ten t squared. However, what we're going to do this time is with this t value here, we're going to substitute that in right here. Since we will have two unknowns, what we need is we need something to substitute in order to find the other unknown. So zero is equal to V, which is what we're looking for, sine 60 times T, which is 200 divided by V, okay? Plus one half, negative 10, and then this is gonna be 200 over V squared. One thing we can see here is the V's cancel out, and I guess that's kind of it. I'll just put sine 60 as a number. So sine 60 is equal to 0.866 and then times 200. So this is gonna be 173.2. So zero is equal to 173.2 plus, I'll simplify this here, negative five, and then this is gonna be 400 squared. Oh, not squared. Nope, sorry, 200 squared isn't 400. 200 squared is equal to 40,000. 40,000 V squared. So we're looking for what this uh, velocity is. So we have to simplify to find that. So I'm gonna bring this over to the other side. Negative 173.2 is equal to, and I'm gonna add both of these. I mean multiply that. So this is gonna be negative five times 40,000 is negative 200,000 divided by V squared. So now I'm gonna put this V squared over here. V squared is equal to negative 200,000 divided by negative 173.2. Square root both of these. And we get 173.2 square root 33.98 meters per second okay it was pretty difficult but when we ha when we don't have enough information what we're going to try to do is we're going to come up with two equations and then use substitution to find the other answer okay so I know it's a bit overwhelming but take a step by step all right next example Another problem that students struggle a lot with is just when there's only variables. A projectile is launched from the ground with initial velocity of V initial and angle theta above the horizontal. How long will the projectile remain in the air? So let's draw this out. Something gets shot out with a velocity of V, angle theta, and we're looking for how long it takes to hit the ground, how long it will be in the air for. So let's just first see everything we know about this problem. X and the Y. We know that the acceleration to Y is going to be equal to gravity. So I'm going to call that negative gravity. We know that displacement in the Y is going to be on the same plane in the Y direction. Does it, it's, it's at the same spot. So displacement to Y is zero. We know that the initial velocity in the y direction is going to be this v initial but it's going to be opposite so it's going to be sine of theta and what we're looking for is the time we know the x but it we have more information in the y so we're just going to use everything in the y so we're going to find what equation has all four of these variables and again we see it's this one right here so we do displacement in the y equals v initial y t plus one half a y t squared. And let's plug everything in. 
zero is equal to v initial sine theta times the time which we're looking for plus one half negative g uh, t squared and t again what we're looking for so i'm going to try to isolate this t to find this answer so i'm going to bring this over negative v initial sine theta t is equal to one half negative g t squared one thing I could do is get rid of one of the t's. So now I have that, and I'm gonna bring this over to the other side. So I'm gonna bring this over to the other side. So this is, and uh, I'll get rid of the negative as well. So v initial sine theta, and I'm gonna bring this half over to the other side. So this is two over here, and g over to the other side. So g equals t. This is my answer. And this is going to be b right here. Oh, so. Yep, it's going to be B. Okay. Do one more of these because these could be a little bit confusing. It's the same thing as the other problem. There's just no numbers. So you have to be comfortable with these variables in your answer. A projectile is launched from the ground with the initial velocity V initial at angle theta above the horizontal. How long will the projectile take to reach the maximum height in the air? So this is a little bit different. So we have, again, V initial angle and then falls like this however what we're looking for is the time it takes to reach the highest point right there so let's uh let's use all the information we know again we're gonna uh we're all gonna only need the y so we know the acceleration of y again is negative g we know that the initial velocity is going to be this velocity times sine of theta. Um, we're looking for time. And the last piece of information we know we should know is that the final velocity in the y direction at the highest point equals zero. Only in the y direction is zero. So now we're going to look at our formula sheet. And we're going to see this formula right here is what we're going to need. So acceleration is equal to v final minus v initial over t. Acceleration negative g is equal to 0 minus v initial sine theta divided by t. So let's uh, look at this. We're just going to isolate this t. So we're going to put t onto the other side. t is equal to negative v initial sine theta divided by negative g. The negatives cancel out. And we get t is equal to v initial sine theta over g, which is a. And what we should realize from the other problem is the same exact thing, except the what we look for is the time for the whole thing. But we should know that up here is just going to be half of this, and half of this is just v initial sine over g. So we get rid of the two. And that's the answer we got over here, v initial sine theta g. Alright guys, thank you for going through all this and good luck with everything in projectile motion.